Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our coverage here of the 20th National Congress and of the Communist Party of China. Good morning, everyone. And uh, let's do a time check. Time check is 10.09 in Beijing. And let's do a temperature check. It's 26 here in I. Um, well, I keep saying I Chongqing. It's 26 here in Chongqing. And I'm Alex and I'm here with I Chongqing. And of course, we got for Mubei Fernando, who is coming into the show today, um, let us know. Uh, good audio and good video. Thank you, Ken. Welcome. Hello, Rommel. Thank you for joining us and the Quantum. Thank you guys for all uh, joining in today. We have uh, immense coverage here of the uh, 20th Congress. And of course, we got some interesting things to cover here. Now, We've been working on Fernando's feed there uh, and his audience. He's going to come on. We're going to put him on uh, probably audio. We're finding that that works best. But don't worry. He has a lot in store. Let's give him a dial, shall we? Let's call him up and see what he's doing. Let's give him a call here. And we're using, actually, uh, WeChat. Uh, this is, this is going to be new for us. Fernando, I'm calling you. <laughs> All right. Let's just see if we can get a hold of him. Let me know if you guys can hear that. Is there any feedback? Fernando, how are you? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Alex. How are you? <laughs> good. Let's just do a sound check here with our audience and see. Can you guys hear Fernando? Just let us know if you can hear him clearly. If you do, we will carry on with the program. All right. One second, Fernando. Uh, nice to, where are you based right now, Fernando? Um, right now, I am in Henan, in ah. a small place called San Menxia. Uh, which is a mountainous area uh, in the north of Henan. And we've been visiting some uh, pit dwellings. Uh, it's a kind of housing here in Henan, very traditional, where people live. Um, they make pit holes, and that's where they live. Uh, but then again, uh, I wanted to check if people are listening to this. Yeah, everybody here. is. Yeah, and everyone's saying sounds very clear, loud and clear. Uh <laughs> <laughs> looking good uh some uh some are saying that uh, they used to talk to their girlfriends like this i'm not sure but anyway it's intimate uh fernando we're having a good time <laughs> excellent excellent um so um today we're talking about um uh, the 20th mm -hmm. right the big big yeah. 20th which is very important right. and um for those of you watching we we have a, a plan that we would like to cover we might deviate and go through some rabbit holes but in, in essence we want to talk about some of the most important things that were discussed on the first day of that speech mm -hmm. uh, you already did a, a video with Mario, but yes. I would like to touch on some of the things that are not so obvious from what he was going to say. Mm. Um, Good. But uh, why don't we start talking about pre 20th and some of sure. the ridiculous things that actually took place. Right, right. And let me know throughout this show here, we've loaded uh, a bunch of uh, video clips and um, a bunch of um, images that you've sent into the show last night. We've uh, uh, made those into kind of like a slide program for for the audience to see. Uh -huh. All right. So just uh, about a week or three or four days before the 20th, you'll remember that situation in the bridge in Beijing. Yes, 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 yes. We also had the situation where mm -hmm. Jen Jen, as I like to call her, uh, posted that Xi Jinping had been sent to prison. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. He had been deposed. Right. You remember that. Yes, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> so um, we we can see how the world is really concerned with whatever China is doing. Mm -hmm. And they cannot help it but create stories. Right. Things that they can peddle to their viewers, to their already biased audience to try and discredit China one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, the, the end game for me is a little bit weird. I don't understand it, Alex. You, mm -hmm. you might want to explain it to me. What is the point of saying that Xi Jinping is in prison? Uh, zero point. When he's gonna, <laughs> when when he's just gonna come out and and just make an appearance after his quarantine mm -hmm. from being abroad. I do <sighs> not get it. That's yeah, so ridiculous. It's it's very strange, but uh, you know the collective West media has always been strange for quite some time. We we know that. 
We know that. <laughs> yeah. The other thing was uh, with the situation with the banner in Beijing, mm -hmm. you could clearly see that that was written by somebody who doesn't speak Chinese very well. Yeah. Clearly. Or who doesn't understand Chinese <laughs> very well. There were some grammar mistakes. There were some strokes that were missing in some of the characters. And uh, it was really prepared. Scripted. <laughs> before the event. Exactly. So it's you, you know how America likes to do stunts around the world to create uh, instability. This has all the signs of something like that. Again, it's going to be very difficult to prove it, but the facts are there. Mm -hmm. The grammar that was used in that banner was incorrect, and the strokes in those characters were missing. Uh, that that doesn't happen if you're Chinese. So that leads us to think that that was planted. Uh, you know, of course, and, and, and we've seen this with many, many things, many stories that are, are coming out there, you know, uh, police, uh, fake police images, fake images of uh, people that have been uh, held captive, allegedly. I mean, the stories that are coming out, the more obnoxious they are, the better the headlines. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, after... Uh, the opening speech took place, uh, I think it went for two hours, Xi Jinping. We have CNN coverage. We're, we're talking about the ridiculous things. Then we're going to start talking about the serious stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got this uh, CNN reporter. I think he's a Steve CNN. That's his Twitter handle. He mm -hmm. goes on, on TV and said that you have to focus on the small things. <laughs> Xi Jinping was drinking tea Okay. As he was giving his two-hour speech, and that's a sign of lack of stamina. <laughs> For me, I, I just need to say, when, when he was giving the speech, the moment he finished the speech, which I watched, mm -hmm. the first thing that came to my mind, imagine Xi Jinping Mm. drinking tea during a two-hour speech. Now, imagine <laughs> for a second... Joe Biden trying to give a two-hour speech. Mm. You will be hearing a thousand two hundred four hundred and twenty-eight times. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? So let's talk about stamina right there. Um, I don't know. That was so ridiculous. Um, and of course, pointing out the the fact that Xi Jinping is in the middle and nobody is behind him at the beginning of the ceremony, and that's just protocol. But, oh, he's alone. He's left uh, to his own devices. Oh, my God, the crisis <laughs> of the CPC. Well, they don't say CPC, they say CCP, right? But it's yeah, CPC. Of course. It's, it's so ridiculous, and I don't know where does that land. And he's going on about, uh, oh, the the people are very unhappy. And he was reading it off a teleprompter, okay? Bad mm -hmm. reading off a teleprompter. But it almost, you could almost say, uh, if you wanted to fabricate that story, you could say, 
Mike Pompeo under duress. You can tell his eyes were twitching that whoever was filming it, he, he was doing it under immense pressure. So, I mean, <laughs> those are things that, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, just before we move on to the show here, guys, I just wanted to show you some of the highlights of day four and day three, uh, Beijing, the coordinated development of Beijing, Tianjin Hebei is a major national strategy. If you guys didn't know that, uh, Tianjin and Beijing are very near each other. That whole area is getting a major, major uh, investment in it. Uh, China has guaranteed that it is food supply remains firmly in its hand. Shanxi, the international domestic energy structure, has undergone major changes. Shanxi must shoulder the major responsibility of ensuring national energy security, and the country must not worry about coal. Um... I think um, my research guys sent me some other stuff here that I just wanted to uh, bring up. Um, let me have a look here. Uh, one second here. One second here. Uh, okay, one moment. Let me just pull this up. Uh, yes, Shangan New Area. The Shangan New Area, the cumulative investment of more than, get this guys, get this figure, write it down. This is a big one. 460 billion yuan has been completed and the Shangan High Speed Railway Station has been completed and open to traffic. Uh, didn't we see a bunch of people that uh, were talking about that it was um, a ghost town and never to open? Do you know about that area? Uh, I don't know about that area, but I know about many stories like this where people say, oh, this is going nowhere and then in five, ten years is fully populated and is becoming a very productive area of the country. So, uh, yeah, I've yeah. Heard those are stories, but not this particular area. Yeah. I've done a, I've done quite a sizable video on that area. Uh, let's have a quick, uh, now nah, we don't need to show it now. Let's move on. We got a lot to cover on that show. We'll, we'll do that in another show, but anyway, uh, in the Shungan area, it's major, major, ma it's basically a new super city. Um, so, uh, yes. Okay. Fire away, Fernando. Continue, sir. All right. Look, I think that the main theme, uh, the main theme of what we heard, or what we've heard so far, revolves around the word rejuvenation. Just right. Re rejuvenation of many different aspects uh, of China. Mm -hmm. Its economy, its military, its democracy, it, education, health. Xi Jinping went three, through 16 different points. And in all of them, you could hear the word rejuvenation. So mm -hmm. I'd like to take a moment for us to think about what does that mean in different aspects? Right. Uh, for me, rejuvenation means one simple thing. They do not rest on their laurels. Correct. They do not rest on their successes. Can we, we say can accountability too? For Sorry to really interrupt you. Can, can we say accountability as well? Is that okay to say that? Yeah, accountability okay. is a very important part of um, what we see taking place in, in China. One of the points in that presentation, in the first speech, was corruption. We hmm. need to work on our corruption laws, and China needs to uh, get better at stopping corruption. Accountability is so important because it gives people the trust that they that they need in mm -hmm. the government when impunity uh, is common then you stop trusting the government right when you see leaders being removed when you see leaders being judged when you see leaders that have done things that go against the well-being of society sent to prison for example mm. that's accountability for a government mm -hmm. now what's the spin ah oh, he's going after his opposers well uh, you have two choices you do the right thing because it's the right thing or you don't do the right thing because they might say something that you don't like or that looks negative well, that should tell people that here in China, they don't care about what the West actually says. Somebody is doing corrupt actions, corrupt deeds, he's going to face the consequences. So accountability is really 
at the core of what Xi Jinping has done in the last 10 years. When he came in, he came, you, you could hear it in the air, you could hear it in the circles, like, wow, uh, now everything has to have an invoice. Now you can't uh, drink alcohol when you go to a dinner with officials mm -hmm. because that is not going to be paid by the taxpayers. So many little things and big things that uh, change since Xi Jinping uh, came to power. Now, I was talking about rejuvenation in terms of poverty alleviation. Um, when you think about 800 million people being removed from abject poverty, that is a gigantic endeavor. Mm. Well, what does that entail? Hmm. It entails there are roads. There's water. It was a thing that was really special in those 10 years that Xi Jinping has been has been leader. Toilets. You remember? Public yeah, to toilets. toilet revolution, man. <laughs> it's a toilet <laughs> revolution. And and you know what? There's no, no joke. There's no joking about that, uh, Fernando. There's no. absolutely no joking. And the thing about what you're saying, when the people say, well, yes, he is cracking down. Yes, he is cracking down. Because it comes from the top down. There's a responsibility. This man didn't get into this position because he knew someone or he spent billions of dollars like you know some of these um, uh, people that run for election in the United States or make promises all over. I'm hearing there was figures between 100,000 to 270,000 people uh, where uh, you know were either fined, arrested, uh, whatever, but you know what? We'll, we'll see the Western media. It will point out. It will say, "Well, they crack down on it and the corruption." Not one person denies from the Western media that corruption did happen because, oh no, 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 they could definitely not say, "Oh, uh, China uh, didn't have any corruption." So and then they say, "Well, how dare he clamp down on corruption? How dare he do that? That's very strange." Uh, people were breaking the law. Uh, he clamped down on it, lavish spending. And look at the figures. Look at the country. Look at the people. I mean, you know how it is in, in China here, Fernando. You know there's accountability all the way down to the community leader. And I will tell the audience today, I have to say, and I'm so, uh, so glad that you're on the program today, but Nine days or 10 days of effective dynamic COVID policy has brought my, right, my section of the city here where I'm in, we're 3.7 million out of our, we'll call it small lockdown as of about an hour and a half ago, uh, we're out of it. It's over. It's completed. The cases have dropped. Uh, I'm hearing, I think, uh, last couple of days has been zero and uh once again it's it's just i could only wish to see these types of programs implemented uh in our systems over to you over to you uh is exactly the same um and i would like to um guide our viewers and our audience to my channel. If you go to the community tab, you'll see a post where you can actually watch a video that I did in Beijing um, at the beginning of September when I talked about how efficient and effective the zero COVID policy is. Ah, it's effective. You went on lockdown for nine days. Nine days, only nine days, yeah. And now it's safe. And now it's safe. Your health, your My. health has been protected, mm -hmm. and now you can continue with your life. Yeah, moving I on. I am also in a lockdown, so to speak, here in the mountain. Every day, I go down to get my test, come back to my RV, do my work, just enjoy my time in this <laughs> in this mountain. And this morning, we confirmed that we are free to keep on moving. So it's, it's just a matter of whenever there's a spike, whenever there is a situation, they target it, mm -hmm. they deal with it, 
And once it's done, back to normal. Now, I, I actually talked about uh, the importance of how to how to put it, the importance of defending this approach versus the Western's approach. And I Chong Ching sent a, a question on Twitter to me earlier oh, about okay. what do you think it was important? And I mentioned, look, opening up for China right now does not seem like a good prospect to me. And, this and is I just I, my opinion. I agree with you on that. It has to be a because balanced all approach. The effort all the effort, all the the suffering, all the struggle, all the hardship of keeping us healthy, all the, the price that we are paying for staying healthy would go to waste once you open out the border to people who do not give a damn about this virus. To them, it's a thing of the past. Westerners is like, oh, we're back to normal. But they're not focusing on the numbers, on, yeah. the, on the deaths and the, the um, cases that they're registering on a daily basis. Yeah. And there's it's so in the U.S. it's different. still ripping. It's still ripping in the United States. It's still ripping pretty good. And it's, it's still ripping in Canada and, uh, and the United Kingdom. I think uh, who was it that just recorded over 100,000? Our audience can uh, let us know. Let us know how things are going in your country. And. We're not, you know, as Fernando is saying, we're not coming at this on uh, criticizing other countries. We're coming at this from a way of saying this is how it is in a country of 1.5 billion. Um, the rest of the world may envision that the dynamic, uh, you know, COVID policy here means that the entire country is locked down, shut down. No one can do anything. No one can go anywhere. Not the case. It's systematically done, whether it's in cities, whether it's in regions, whether it's in districts, you know, whether it's in counties, the communities deal with it, the municipalities deal with it. And if the central government has to step in, they will also step in from a larger grand scale. But it's done in a way that I will give you an example. If you're in a city in, uh, and I'm going to go back to using, uh, you know, the collective West uh, United States, for example, let's say you're living in, I don't know, St. Louis, and there's an outbreak. And the cases start to rise. Well, immediately how it's done here is they go, all right, everybody, let's start testing. They start testing. They find out where it major, the major area was spread. They target that area. They find out through the contact tracing app that works. Now, the audience might say, well, I don't want to give up my privacy. If you have a smartphone in America right now and you are on an Apple or you are on a um, an Android mobile phone using the uh, Play Store, you are definitely, definitely uh, giving up your privacy anyway, okay? But these apps are very effective, and what they've done is uh, give you an example. Like I said, again, if you're in St. Louis and um, – there's an outbreak and there's an outbreak at a mall. They will know within hours who to contact and who to say, wherever you are, get a test. If you're green, if you're yellow, stay put, stay where you are. We will come help you. We will come assist you. Not we are going to take you away somewhere. No, 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 no. It's there to protect your life. If you had an elderly mother, okay, which I do. I would be terrified. Um, uh, and my mother has uh, breathing conditions, okay? So COVID is something that uh, she definitely doesn't want to get, okay? And I don't want her to get it either. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, is I saw it firsthand again here, systematically over the last nine days, Fernando, on how it is done. It's not hard. You take your phone, you get it scanned, you get a free COVID test, you go on, you can, you know, you can get some groceries, come back home. Everybody's following the rules. There's nobody out there getting stabbed or people breaking into cars. It's everyone is working and pulling together for the better of humanity. Now they target it. They found the area. They found the people. They even called us and said, you know, um, have you guys, go, did you guys go to the mall this certain day? If we're concerned, uh, we just were calling about your health and we just said, nope, didn't go to the mall. And they said, okay, thank you very much. 
have a nice day. Um, please follow your local um, rules and regulations from your community leaders. Exactly what we did. Nine days, 3.7 million people. It's over. Now do that uh, and see how many people you can save in, in, the, in the world here. Follow that program. And that's, I totally agree with you, Fernando, that that's why the world, or that's why China is not going to deviate away from this. They may open up with restrictions, but they're going to be systematically done. I even heard last night, and this is total speculation, everyone, okay? This is speculation. This is just uh, reading a, a few articles here in some of the uh, Chinese newspapers and actually some of the international newspapers that they may try, at least in the Hong Kong, the special administration region and Macau, to do a pre uh, kind of quarantine in your own city prior to then going to these uh, other parts of China. Now, you might say, well, that's a lot to, to do. Well, not really if you've got family and friends that you haven't seen for three years. And also, uh, you know, the mainland, uh, you know, there's still 5,000 uh, cases yesterday in, in just in Hong Kong and less than I don't know how many in, um, in China, but it was very, very low. So they're going to go that way, right? They're going to they're gonna follow their procedures. They're going to follow their science and they're going to follow something that was successful um, that has been actually trashed by the West. Fernando, go ahead. Thank you. I, I don't want anybody to get the impression that people are happy about this. Yes. I don't want people to think that this is enjoyable. No, <laughs> these are limitations and these are uh, things that nobody really appreciates uh, fully until they realize that because those measures were in place is that we get to live another day mm. is that our families are kept healthy. So going for a test every day, is that something that I want to do forever? Mm. No, but it's very easy to understand that is what we've got to do right now. You play with the cars that you're being dealt and that's what China is doing. So in terms of COVID, I don't see China changing. A lot of the speculation was out there saying like, oh, after the National People's Congress, uh, China is going to ease off. Mm -hmm. I don't see it happening at all. But I also want to touch on another aspect that Xi Jinping mentioned during his speech. Mm -hmm. and, and you guys touched on it uh, when you were talking to Mario. Yes. One of them is... China doesn't shy away from its problems. There are issues, for example, with birth rates. That is something that is, is going to be addressed, that needs to be addressed, that needs to be uh, tackled. And the fact that Xi Jinping mentions it before the world, because everybody's listening and everybody's watching, should tell you that there is a high degree of transparency in China. Now, why are birth rates going down? People say, oh, it's a sign of modernity, um, uh, a better life or, or a modern life usually causes drops in um, birth rates, the cost of living. So when, what can the government do? Hmm. Well, they can work in trying to make the most expensive aspects of life in China cheaper. For example, one of them, education. Education is one of the most expensive items in, in a family. When you have a, a, a child, a kid, you want to give him the best education because you want him to be able to go to the best universities in the country. So what happens with the educational, what happens with the educational reform? Well, what they're trying to do is try to focus on vocational 
uh, institutions. Institutions where people can learn skills, can learn other trades, and in doing so, um, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you still. Yeah, no problem. We still got you. So this educational reform is about giving the lower brackets of income a path to success, a path to a prosperous life. That's mm -hmm. what they're trying to do. That's what they talk about when they say rejuvenation. They're trying to do this. Let me see if I can change my camera one second. Yeah, it's okay. We still have you here anyway, uh, nice and clear. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> we got you a bit. We'll keep the sound on your camera muted, but uh, you can continue to talk through right. via WeChat. That would be great. Um, sure. the, re the reason for uh, everyone, why we have uh, Fernando on WeChat is just uh, he's uh, he's probably in not the greatest signal area at the moment, but we wanted, I insisted that he be on the show today and we did find a solution. So uh, we have an image and uh, I think the, the voice is pretty clear here. I uh, just want to, once again, before Fernando carries on with uh, what a great chat this is uh, turning out to be, I uh, want to say thank you to a lot of the um, people that have continued to come back here for our coverage all week. Uh, thank you, Hang uh, and Ken and uh, the Quantum, and many of the other viewers that have uh, come in. Cam35, thank you for that as well. Uh, we have uh, Stefan who comes in here that doesn't really see eye to eye uh, with what we have, uh, with what China has done here, but that's good. It's healthy for conversation. Um, obviously this, uh, sometimes, um, you know, these streams turn into, um, I would say a place for fee people who are very frustrated with their government to come on, uh, chat forums like this and to scream out, uh, to be upset or to criticize, uh, another government's successful approach. Uh, I totally understand, uh, what people, uh, are like, they must be frustrated, uh, in their, with the, the government of their own countries that are funding, uh, other wars around the world for multi billions of dollars, watching the fuel prices skyrocket, uh, unemployment, people dying. I get it. I understand it. And I think I know who you are. Anyway, go ahead, Fernando. Well, uh, this, this whole idea of, um, reforming education is directly targeted at improving birth rates when it becomes cheaper, when it becomes easier for families to have kids that will have a prosperous future, then there is an incentive for people to have larger families. Remember, the one-child policy was eliminated um, and the birth rate is still dropping. Why? Because there was not a path for that. Now they're working on it. Let me see, this is weird flares. So now they're working on making it affordable for people to have larger families. Now, there's another aspect that's important there in terms of, in terms of population. Um, when uh, kids are getting trained in different skills or different trades, it's going to create opportunities for other types of economies to develop as well. So it's all connected to, to one another. Now, you cannot look at China's uh, development over the last three years without thinking of how COVID had affected uh, birth rates. Do people want to have children while we are in this pandemic? So that probably shows a big dip over the last three years. Now, once we get out of this pandemic, which is going to take some time, mm -hmm. will it improve by itself? Is it going to be a natural response? So that's something to keep an eye on. Everything that Xi Jinping discussed has to be studied or, or, or looked at in light of the pandemic that we have experienced over the last three years, which is what is it, 60% 60, 60 of the last period where he was elected. Now, another aspect that he mentioned that needs improving, he talked about 
democracy, rejuvenation of democracy. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means getting younger generations involved in the democratic processes of China. People say like, oh, China has no democracy. Uh, you, you don't know what you're talking about. There are democratic processes. Um, so this rejuvenation of democracy means we need to start talking and getting younger people involved with volunteering, with uh, young leadership uh, in different communities and different, and different spheres of life be it sports, art, culture. So helping those young people who have a, a leadership skill to channel those energies, to channel those people to become much more involved in the ruling of the country, the running of the country. That's, that's a very important part because not every member of the community, and this is something that a lot of people don't understand, not everybody in China is member of the Communist Party. It's only 90 million and China has 1.4 billion people. What they want is more voices. It doesn't necessarily have to be members of the Communist Party. It could be from any of the other eight political parties in China. Did you hear me? Eight political parties in China, and they're all represented. Um, it was wonderful for me to see when the cameras are panning around, see the minorities being represented. So this rejuvenation of democracy is an acknowledgement that there's more to be done. There are levels of democracy. There's levels of uh, involvement and listening to people. As I said at the beginning, it's about not resting in your on your laurels. They they listen to the people, they reform, they enact um, rules and, and and new measures to run the country in a way that favors the people, in a way that satisfies the the needs and the requirements of people. But they're always thinking there's more to be done. Um, if I want, if I were to go back a little bit, one of the issues with um, rejuvenation of rural areas, and this is something that I was talking to Ai Chongqing about, one of the issues is that younger generations any kind of um, activity related to tourism. That's number one. So now the job is to make the rural areas more attractive to the younger generation, to this Gen Z. And they're doing it little by little. First, poverty alleviation, right? Build the roads, improve the toilets, give them Wi-Fi coverage, give them water, give them give them the basics. Rejuvenation means take it to the higher level. Now, when people say, "Ah, oh, does that mean that there are no poor, no poor people in China?" Of course there are. Of course there are. And that means the job is not done yet. As I mentioned, they have roads, they have water, they have Wi-Fi, they have power, they have they get to sell their produce online. But the job is not done. I think that that's the main the, the main thing about rejuvenation. It means we haven't finished yet. And I would like to touch on a very important aspect of 
Western media and Xi Jinping getting reelected. Mm-hmm. Why is he getting reelected? Because he's not done. <laughs> Because the project is not done because the targets and the goals and the objectives that he has presented to the country are not finished. And everybody in the country understands that. Even even under COVID uh, issues, you can see that he has delivered, but he's not done. People, oh, when is he going to step down? When when he's done? Or when he fails to perform at the requirement of the, the other members of the Politburo? So it, it, it's that simple. It, he gets reelected because he is delivering on the goals that he has set. And he's also not finished with his projects. When you read his books, right, you understand, I mean, a lot of people who criticize Xi Jinping haven't even read his books. It's a very detailed map of what he wants for China. And because of what he wants for China is that he was elected. Um, I also wanted to talk about one more thing that Xi Jinping addressed during his speech. It was quite brief. However, a lot of people are talking a lot, a lot of headlines. He talked about Taiwan. He said, Taiwan is part of China. We want peaceful reunification. He said that again and again and again. If you think that Taiwan is not part of China, international law disagrees with you. International diplomatic diplomatic agreements disagrees with you. So he talked about extending one country, two systems to Taiwan. Now, the thing that everybody held on to in Western media was the fact that he said, one sentence. Yeah, I knew it. I knew what we you're talking about. Not, we will not take off the table military action. But, oh, my God. But they forget the rest of the sentence <laughs> against foreign forces. Against forces that are seeking the independence of Taiwan. Don't mess with Taiwan. There's no need for anything. Um, Now, a lot of people... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're going to cut into some coverage here. Um, Authorities brief media on building higher standard rule of law in China. I think it's important. Let's listen to a couple of minutes of this because this could uh, really uh, cover what you were speaking about before. Uh, Do you mind if we cut to the, the feed for about two minutes? Integrated reform of civil administrative and criminal trials of intellectual property rights applied punitive damages to significantly increase the cost of infringement and strengthened the mechanism for linking administrative enforcement with justice so as to enhance the ability to protect the whole process. Fourth, the international influence of judicial protection has continued to rise. We have protected the legitimate rights and interests of both Chinese and foreign IPR holders impartially in accordance with law, fulfilled our obligations under international treaties, deep in the exchanges and cooperation with WIPO and others, and demonstrated our clear position on strict protection of intellectual property rights. More and more foreign companies have chosen Chinese courts to settle their disputes. Looking forward, we will give full play to the the function of adjudication. 
and served the strategy to promote China's science and education. The People's Court plays an important role in this aspect and will continue to enhance judicial protection and serve the high-level independent technological progress. Second, we'll improve rules for the protection of IPR in big data, AI, and genetic technology, enhance justice in fighting monopoly and unfair competition, and promote the orderly and legal development of capital. We'll step up the coordinating, step up and coordinate the interaction between the legislative branch and the administrative and executive branch. Third, we'll make the judicial protection system more fair, efficient, science based, clear bounded, clearly bounded, and complete. Advance the building of the professional trial system. And fourth, we'll deepen international judicial exchanges and cooperation and improve China's image and international influence as an impartial IPR protector. Thank you. Legal Daily. In the report, it is said that administrative law enforcement will be strict, procedure-based, impartial, and civil across the board. How does the public security system embed the fairness and justice in all the procedures of law enforcement? Thank you. The 20th CPC National Congress has made new plans for promoting the rule of law in China and exercising law-based governance on all fronts. Let me share some information about our work in this area and our future plans. The public security organs across the country have thoroughly studied and implemented the Xi Jinping thought on the rule of law, stuck to the requirements of strict, procedure-based, impartial and civil law enforcement, and continuously improve the rule of law in public security work, making our work more governed by the rule of law and enjoy greater visibility. In the past 10 years, working with the relevant departments, we have uh, helped to make and amend anti-terrorism law, cybersecurity law, anti-organized crime law, and anti-telecom -tele fraud law, and other laws and regulations that are closely related to public security work, altogether 15 laws, and 10 laws, and 15 administrative rules. We have also implemented and rolled out rules of work for the handling of criminal cases and administrative cases, 22 in total. We have also promulgated a number of rules, guide to action and manuals to ensure that law enforcement in our system operates on the track of the rule of law. In our practice, we make sure that we fully discharge all legally mandated duties and handle all cases according to the law. We are improving our method of working and strengthening oversight and management over the whole procedure of law enforcement. We have promoted five mechanisms with great vigor. The first is to reform case filing system to define clear deadlines for case handling, strengthen daily inspection and oversight so as to resolve the problems of delayed recording of cases and deviation from standard procedures. Second, audio and visual recording of on-the-ground law enforcement. 
We have provided with our frontline police officers more than 1.3 million pieces of devices for such recording to put on record all procedures and the standard of their practices. Third, subject the whole procedure case handling to oversight. We have established and launched into operation 3,027 law enforcement case handling centers in cities and counties across the country, basically covering all the registered cases and counties in China. As a principal, criminal cases are all handled in these centers. Fourth, we are promoting greater openness in law enforcement to enable maximum openness in terms of legal mandate, procedures, progress, and uh, outcomes of law enforcement to ensure the public's right to know, participate, and to exercise oversight. Fifth, we have established accountability system for law enforcement to hold mistakes accountable in law enforcement and uh, ensure lifelong responsibility for the quality of cases they handle to ensure that those with powers have the corresponding duties and the abuse of power is held accountable. In the past 10 years, we have continuously increased political awareness and uh, strictly managed the whole team and educated the public security team to re minimize the problems of unfairness and lax practices. We have carried out extensive training across the system, having held more than 300,000 training sessions, which enhanced our police officer's sense of purpose, sense of the rule of law, their commitment to human rights protection, and enhance their capacity for better law enforcement. We have seen a large number of uh, strict, procedure-based, impartial, and the civil cases of law enforcement that are impeccable and can be used as textbook cases. We have received widespread acclaim. So we have made tremendous progress and achieved great results. Going forward, the public security organs across the country will further study the spirit of the 20th CPC National Congress, stay guided by the citizen thought on the rule of law, stick to the requirements on advancing law-based governance on all fronts and promoting the rule of law in China and promote strict procedure-based, impartial, and civil law enforcement across the board, crack down on the activities of hostile forces in subversion, sabotage, and crack down on the crime to arouse the strongest public concern, protect the legitimate rights and interests of the people in accordance with the law, deepen reform of law enforcement oversight and management, and improve the operation of law enforcement powers in accordance with the law so that the values of fairness and justice is fully embedded into the whole procedure of law enforcement in our system, to make sure that the public can see that fairness and justice is in action in every case we handle and every matter we deal with. We will make new contribution to build the highest standard rule of law in China. Thank you. Well, you heard it there. Um, I, I just want to go over a couple of key points here uh, for the audience. Accountability. Adding 1.3 million uh, cams for transparency. Um, also, they're talking about the court system that international companies are using the court system, the Chinese court system, to help them uh, litigate against IP theft. Okay, are, are the people listening to what this man just said? He's talking that we will continue to move forward to make the society safer, but in the same sentence saying that 
There are civil cases uh, that need to be resolved. There are criminal cases that need to be resolved. There's more transparency. People will learn the rules of law. And this, once again, is textbook. Uh, I mean, it's textbook, Fernando. Mm. <laughs> Look, uh, I am one of those people who have had the experience of going to court, actually, uh, two times. And whenever people tell me there's no rule of law in China, I say, that's not my experience. Because in both cases, I have won. Mm. As a foreigner, as a whatever you want to call it, they just listen to you, you present your evidence, you go to court and say, like, hey, you did this person wrong, so you need to uh, compensate him for this or for that. So that's my personal experience. Now, is this high-level legal stuff? Mm, no, it's just my personal experience. But you can't, again, you cannot rest on your laurels. You might be doing something great, but it needs to be perfected. That striving to get better at what they're doing is something that you can only do if the foundation is solid. If you're constantly trying to fix the foundations where, you, where you've messed up in the past, it's very difficult to move forward and to improve on, on what you're doing. So they're doing something to improve on what they have. Um, I wanted to um, address one of the things that I said, not sure. in relation to to rejuvenation, but in terms of the attacks that we are seeing lately, you mm -hmm. have their least trust on our screen. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to keep the, these headlines up, this headline page up there? Are you okay with that? Fine, fine, but I'm going to mention a couple of things that perhaps we can show to our audience sure, as well. absolutely. When Xi Jinping is calling for the rejuvenation of the military, people are like, oh, look at China. But can you please take a second and look at what the world is saying about China? Lee's Trust has decided that China is going to be listed as a threat to the UK. What does that mean? Hmm. What is What has China done to the UK to grant that status as a threat? Nothing. I, I, I beg of our audience to put it in the comment section. What has China done to the UK that merits being classified, categorized as a threat to the UK? Then you step onto the EU and you, I think I sent you that short video of Ursula van der Leiden. I forgot how you pronounce her last name. Va says, van der Crazy. <laughs> van der Crazy. <laughs> Defeating Russia is not enough. We need to go after China. The objective in the end is China. This is the, the leader of the EU telling you that they're coming for China. What has China done? To the EU. Now, just this morning, our great friend and a great person to follow on Twitter, Arnaud Bertrand, a French guy, he's back in France. He shared on Twitter two pages of indications that the Senate or the Congress, I forget which one of the two in the United States, is pushing to get, and, and let me get this right, I don't want to say it, there is bipartisan legislation that has been introduced in the Senate that would grant the Pentagon wartime procurement, procurement powers. Mm, 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 mm. Two 
tackle China. Wow. A potential confrontation with China. It says, with an eye, not only on Russia, but the potential for confrontation with China. The UK calls China a threat. The EU says, oh, Russia is just the path to get to China. And now the US is making arrangements to get money under wartime circumstances to address the issue with China, the threat of China. Anybody, anybody, please write in the comments. What is the threat? I do not understand it. But if this is what we see publicly, us, schmucks, imagine what intelligence in China know. And preparedness, readiness, rejuvenation of the military for defensive purposes is it's necessary if he doesn't do it if he doesn't talk about it if china doesn't get ready then what he's failing at his job so when people talk about oh the talk of militaristic uh, developments and rejuvenation is crazy no it's not is at the level of the circumstance presented by the West. Is that clear? Mm. It's, it's really important for people to remember that China has one military base abroad. Yeah. And that the US has over 800. 800, 800. Many of them are around Russia, and China. Mm -hmm. You know, Mayor, um, uh, China is the threat. Uh, Fernando, when I was in Romania many years ago, traveling through there, I was like, wow, look at the size of this consulate, you know, just in Romania. And you, you will see the embassies uh, all around that eastern part. Uh, and even down as you get to, to uh, you know, and I'm not, I don't even want to get into the NATO led war in Yugoslavia because that is a whole other live stream in itself. But these uh, countries now uh, that, uh, you know, before the breakup of Yugoslavia, now you got Bosnia Herzegovina, massive military US base. You got Kosovo, massive military base. I mean, everyone could see this coming. Uh, the average person knew that this was coming. You kept banging on the doorsteps. I don't see, uh, you know, Chinese warships on the coast of uh, the California coast. I, I don't see them there. Uh, then you have people that say, wow, look at there's um, Chinese police uh, um, in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, they shouldn't be there. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, the FBI works all around the world in intelligence and has their locations all around the world. Um, you know, let's shift over to just I'm just going to go through a couple of the headlines uh, to get them out of the way here. Uh, and then we'll get into your uh, footage that you sent in uh, last night. And we've also uh, got that together. Uh, this is a uh, the Le Tribune in uh, France. It's it's uh, I would say it's a well-read uh, magazine. And of course, uh, they have a lot of articles. Uh, they're talking about uh, Peugeot et Citroën. Uh, they're talking about these two companies that could be leaving the uh, market in China. Well, if I'm a shareholder of those companies, I would definitely wonder what's going on there because you bring these companies back to manufacture in France. Look out what's going on in France right now. There are strikes all over the place. They're demanding higher wages, uh, which is understandable because inflation's gone through the roof, bad decisions from the government. But when you start seeing automobile giants like Peugeot and Citroën um, wanting to move uh, their you know, production back because they're getting pressured back to France, we've seen this before. We've seen these companies come back. They try it. They go under. Uh, they either sell the brand uh, back to China and then China moves forward with that brand. Uh, we have a couple more headlines here. And this is amazing. Uh, we don't really see uh, too much talk about 
China. Um, this is the front page of the Australian last night. DNA tests fail rape victims. Uh, I mean, more internal uh, issues going on in these com countries. Um, you know, endangered whale. Of he these these are the headlines where I think you know shouldn't China be on the headlines of some of these international uh, magazines? They should be. But they're not. They're uh, probably on the fifth page or even the back page. This is China Daily. Xi urges unity to achieve rejuvenation. Uh, another one here. Um, of course, you saw the Liz Truss. Now, I want to talk about this uh, this UK situation here with Liz Truss. Third prime minister about to be replaced in the United Kingdom in six months. That should send shockwaves across the collective West that something is not right. Something is, uh, you know, and all arrows are pointing to, you know, more governments uh, to be, you know, come up for election to be reelected. We are seeing it in the provincial part of Canada right now. They are throwing out provincial governments and replacing them in staggering numbers. And uh, I think people are going to be held accountable for their decisions. Uh, Liz Truss is very anti-China. Um, and we're seeing the Wall Street Journal, which is a... I would say a relatively respected uh, newspaper in the United States, not one print of anything to do with China on their front page. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that is the, uh, that is the just of it uh, there. So those are the international headlines and we dig into those each day to try to find and get an idea of how the uh, international market thinks of um, China at this time. Let's go to a couple of comments um, in the side here. Uh, we have uh, China raising Belt and Road Initiative, Huawei 5G. Uh, yes, they're great networks here in China. Uh, we also have um, some other comments. Um, here's one. Here's an interesting comment. Drugs can ruin people's lives and the economy. So true on that. Uh, if you come to China and you want to embark on a uh, mission to uh, continue uh, drug usage, um, this is not the place to be. And, you know, the, this, there's this fear, again, uh, when you talk about rule, law, and order. People say, oh, they brought in rules. They brought in laws. If you're a citizen that's going amongst your lives, having a good time, raising a family, uh, enjoying going out for drinks, having fun, it's a great life. But if you break the law, if you cause harm, if you rob people, if you steal, if you commit crimes, you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. And, you know, there's one thing to say about high conviction rates here, but I'm, I'm going to go into just a minor detail. Then we're going to hand it over to Fernando because he's got quite a display that we're going to show you here. People say, well, China's got a high conviction rate. Yeah, they do. Because they probably got a high rate of evidence too, uh, okay, and that helps uh, in prosecuting people that do bad. I, I'm, I'm godsmacked on people that defend criminals, okay. I really, I am. Oh well, they maybe there should only be a fifty percent conviction rate. I mean, how's that working out? Here's how the United States legal system works, okay. And I challenge anyone to um, prove me differently. Look up the two largest prison systems in the United States, and you're going to be godsmacked about this, they are publicly run companies that trade on the stock market, on the New York Stock Exchange. They spend money to lobby the judicial system, the judges, to put longer conviction rates on offenders. Why? Well, if you have a publicly run prison, yes, a one year or three year could turn to five years or seven years or 10 years. And well, lo and behold, you're just another figure on a balance sheet. That is not a word of a lie. You can go, you can look it on the internet. Uh, maybe, uh, well, if our viewers have time, look up two, look up largest publicly traded prison systems. Okay. They're money making machines. United States has the most incarcerated people in the world. I'm not lying about that. They have one of the most incarcerated people in the world, and it's not hard to break the law there. Now, 
<laughs> if you don't have money there, you got a bigger problem to defend yourself, even bigger problem. And uh, that's for another day. But let's um, no uh, JD publicly publicly run companies. Uh, the prisons are run like a company internally, probably by private operators, but they are on the balance sheet as publicly run, listed with ticker symbols and everything. All you guys got to do is look it up, and that will say it right there. That uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so I think we got some slides we want to show here. Right, Fernando? Yep. Okay, yeah, yep. Let's, let's get to these here. Um, let me see. Uh, now I've, I've been clever. I put uh, a nice little slideshow together for you. So I have, uh, one slide called photo clips. Okay. I think you know what those are. Mm -hmm. And those are also mm -hmm. including the text clips that you've sent. Uh, the text clips will be at the end of those. So the photos will go in the, uh, order that you did send me. Okay. So the photos mm -hmm. will go on the order and we can stop them at any time, rewind them, look at them. The second one is is three video clips that I've put in uh, the same sequence that or three, two or three. I think one looked duplicated. But anyway, I've got uh, those on there. The second. So which ones would you like me to load first? Um, well, one of the things that we also want to talk about is yes. the situation that has taken place in Manchester. Right. Mm -hmm. So everybody's aware of that. Uh, there has been an incident at the Chinese consulate, and it is being uh, investigated by police. Now, there is a lot of footage that has been shared by BBC. And today, we got the footage shared by the consulate. Hmm. In that footage, you can see these people entering the consulate mm. they one of them runs and actually enters the consulate the other is known as bob he walks past uh the official and then ends up inside the consulate as well now let us be fair The officials from the consulate stepped out and kicked one of the banners. Another one took one of the banners and brought it inside. So, what prompted these officials to go out and do this? Number one, the things that they took down are without a doubt considered offensive. Of course. And there is a law. There is a law that you cannot put offensive things on display. It's a public disturbance. So I'm thinking, and this is where it's a speculation. Did the consulate complain? Did the police do nothing? I don't know. But this is clearly against the rule. You cannot have offensive text and offensive imagery and offensive during, uh, sorry, not the public space. So that's where this is started. Let us move on to the two individuals who entered by themselves. Sh should we show this footage or do you want me to hold? Um, okay, this footage, what we're seeing right here. Or, is, I, ha or I have uh, this. The second person. I have. Okay. I, I want you to pay attention at this person uh, on there. Okay, this is great. This person with the yellow mask. Just tell me to move forward when well. I need to move forward, okay? Just let me know. Sure. As you can see, this person is behind the man with a scarf and a beret. 
that person is an official from the consulate. So he is behind him. You can see on the right, people starting to storm towards the gate. Why? One of the officials took one of the images that was really offensive and he's bringing it inside the consulate. That is something that the police needs to determine whether that was an issue or not. Now, what was the next issue? You see the people running. So let's go to the next one. Now, you can see this man with the yellow mask under the yellow arrow is now running towards the gate. A very important thing to remember, he did not have to do this. He chose to move his feet and go towards the gate. I just want you to understand his location. On the right, you see a man holding a camera above his head and two uh, gentlemen, one with a gray hoodie, is pulling somebody out. At this moment, these protesters pull two officials out. They throw them on the ground and start beating them. That is something for the police to determine what punishment do they deserve. Can you move forward? Now, here we have two arrows. One is a red arrow showing the uh, consulate official. He is being followed by another consulate official in a red jacket. And now we see Bob, who previously was behind the consulate official, in front of the official, and he's headed for the door. Now, at the forefront, you see the guy with the gray hoodie. He's gotten a hold of a man with a helmet and um, kind of like a vest, what looks like a vest. This man in the vest will end up on the ground being hurt, being kicked. All right, let's go to the next one. Again, this is a little bit going back in order, but we see Bob, yellow mask, behind the official. This is the beginning of the situation. Next. And now he's in front. So the official is walking. Bob is running. He has overtaken him. Let's go to the next one. Again, he's in front. And we're going to see a video of him, uh, this Bob guy, stepping into the consulate by himself. This is extremely important because once you break, once you breach the limits of the compound, you are under completely different jurisdiction. Yeah, sovereignty has been broken. Exactly. Let's continue. You can see him. Okay, remember, the official is on the red arrow. Next to the official is a man with a red and gray jacket, which is security. In the video that we're going to play later, you can see actually two people 
breaching the consulate grounds. One of them, I think we, we've gone back to the, to the beginning. Well, perhaps you can watch one of the videos. I'll uh, just move forward on the clip here. Okay, this is when one of the officials takes one of the pictures that was offensive, which remember, is against the law in the UK. You can see them sprinting to storm the gates. It seems coordinated because at the same time that he starts running, Bob starts running. Does that seem like he is being forced? No, he is running out of his own will towards the gate. Uh, next. And he is, this man in a video that we're going to see later, ends up inside the consulate by his own two feet. Here at the back, in the background, behind the, 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 four, the, um, the gray hoodie, you can see in the yellow mask, Bob walking into. Now, this is one of the officials. This is the one who took one of the pictures. They dragged him out. They threw him on the ground and they started kicking him in, in the head. Three different people kick him in the head outside. He lost his helmet. He was wearing a helmet. So let us be clear. We could be talking about what the officials did needs to be investigated. These people need to be investigated too. The level of the brutality of this assault. You are not. You don't have the right. To execute. Or pass judgment on what somebody did. That is for the police to do. But here we see three people. Okay, this is perhaps the most controversial photo because people are saying, oh, this person was dragged in. The timeline is really important. This is Bob. At this moment, let's go back. Bob has already breached the compound. What does that mean? You are now in Chinese territory. We will hold you in. There are two aspects playing here. It's a fast moving situation. Some people are trying to push him out. And that person with his hand on his vest, on his jacket, is trying to push him in. There is no time to coordinate these things. These things happen. What's going through the mind of the guy pulling him? Well, he's entered Chinese territory. Now we deal with him. We could extradite him, we could whatever. This is just a speculation, okay? This is what I think might be going through the mind's head. While the others are trying to push him. However, after this is where the videos come. He ends up inside the consulate one more time. And he starts attacking the person that we saw before. With the red and gray jacket that you see him behind. So perhaps we could show some of the videos. I don't know if you, you were able to upload them. 
Okay, what we're seeing here is Bob beating on the ground the guy in the red jacket. He has stepped in and started beating that guy. Now, officials come out and start to, as you can see, telling him, let go, let go, let go, let go of this guy. He doesn't want to let go. So what do they do? They punch him. Let go, let go, let go. This is the video that I wanted to show you. This is the first individual. This is Bob. But let's go to the other video, the one that, that just started. This is the guy that we saw previously running. He's right at the gate. Run it for another second and he's inside the gate. You see him there, right? He's inside the gate. And those are the people there that, okay, now you've entered Chinese territory. Now we're going to hold you here. You see him running, 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 and he ends up inside. And what do they do? They start grabbing some of these uh, people with helmets. They drag them outside. And then they start beating them. Look, there, stop. The red uh, circle. We'll One sec, we'll, go, we'll wait. I'll, okay. I'll rewind it. <laughs> Tell me where to stop, I'll do it. There, 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 there. The red circle on the left. The guy in the gray hoodie and the lady in the white jacket, they pull the guy out. This is one of the guys with helmet and a vest. They throw him on the ground and they start beating him. The, the red circle on the right shows us two things. Shows us this protester entering the compound and dragging the other person out. Okay? That is the guy in the circle to the right that gets kicked in the head. And there's clear footage of who did it. So that's a separate investigation. That's a separate case. So this video shows us two things. The beating of two officials outside the gate. And it also shows us one of these uh, protesters breaching in. There's another video where you can actually see Bob, the guy with the yellow mask that was coming behind the other official and the security in the red jacket. You can see there at the back, the guy in the red jacket. Well, this Bob guy is in front of them. And that Bob guy walks inside as well. And remember, once they're in, some something kicks in. Okay, let's keep him inside and investigate him. Let's see what's going on with this guy. Who is he? Is he on any kind of database? Is he wanted in Hong Kong? So does that instinct to, to want to keep them inside? In the end, that Bob guy ends up on top of the guy with the red jacket that you see between the two circles. So the guy with the, with the red jacket is behind Bob. Bob enters the compound and then he starts beating the guy with the red jacket. Can we play? Look at, uh, stop it there. Or maybe replay this bit. Keep an eye on the guy with the red jacket and, and the guy with the black hat entering the gate right in front of him. There's a yellow tile or something. 
Keep an eye on the on the guy. He, right now, right now, Red Jacket is touching Bob. Like, hey, 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 I want to go in. And then Bob goes in. And that's when he starts beating the, the guy in the again in the circle we see the other official getting kicked. This is a good one. If you if you can if you could um play this one. You know what's amazing, um, Fernando, is that people are getting these ideas from other people that have been very flamboyant on social media. I'm not going to promote that person's Twitter feed, but we know exactly. Uh, they had an incident a few months back in the UK uh, with a, a national from, uh, we'll say, uh, from the Commonwealth. And um, this sets up people to think that they can walk up to any embassy around the world and behave in any way. First of all, um, <clears throat> you try to do this in America, you'd be shot on the spot. That's, that's, that, th there would be no story. There would be a, a, a story about people being executed. Uh, and <laughs> I mean, you are entering a sovereign com com country. It, it's, 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 you have people have to understand that it's <laughs> China could have used more force in this situation, right? Yep. And things could have been things could have got a lot nastier than than what's happened here. And then you see the police kind of running in there. I mean. It's a little bit late, if you ask me. I mean, the, the, the moment that you breach that line, that sovereign line, everything changes. Um, I'm surprised. Well, carry on with your story. I'm just surprised that this didn't get there's, a there's lot. There's two things that I want, to, I want to mention. Number one, some people were pointing out, oh, the guy in the red jacket at the beginning mm -hmm. seems to have an object in his hand. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it is. It's scary. Uh, yeah, you don't know. Yeah. I'm like, well, from the photo, from the video, it could be anything. It anything. could be a communication device. It could be a phone looking at it from a certain angle. It could be anything. The question is, that is the guy who was attacked by Bob inside the consulate. Wow. If that was a weapon, yeah. he didn't use it. Did he use it? No. <laughs> now, there's another interesting thing uh, that, that uh, a good friend of ours uh, pointed out. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Gray Fox. He mentioned that you can see Bob walking out with his max mask in place. Mm -hmm. And when he goes out and does the interviews, he's got scratches underneath the mask. That's an interesting things to explain mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's let's try to summarize a little bit what took place here this protest was breaking the law because they were displaying obscene uh messages then these people breach the compound with their own feet. These people beat two officials, sorry, three officials, two outside, one inside. And this is what the police is showing you. The police is showing you this is a photo that I sent you this morning. Right. Did I, I think I showed it, didn't I? Uh, I don't know. It says incident at Chinese consulate protest. Uh, let me let me roll that. Yeah, I have that. I, I've got that footage. Let's have a look at that. Let me just move forward here. Is this what you're looking for? Here. Yes. 
So here are the rules. Yeah. They need to announce that they're going to protest. And they cannot display things that can be described as um, altering the order or offending people, which is basically what those signs said in Chinese. And the pictures that was uh, attempted to bring into the consulate was displaying as well. So, but that's, that's a different case. I'm not going to discuss that particular part. But take a look at the incident report from the Manchester police. They say one man was attacked. One man? What about the three Chinese ones? One inside the consulate, two outside. So you could see that the police is reporting this in a way that is not accurate. You can see it in the video. There's two guys with helmets being attacked and there's a guy being attacked inside. Is Bob punched once he's inside the consulate? Yes. Why? To get him to let go of the guy that he's attacking. So again, it's, it's very unfortunate what took place here. And um, we have to wait and see what the, the judgment is going to be. You can see him on the ground and they're trying to get him off him. Let go, let go, let go. Oh, you're not letting go? Okay, here, have a punch or two. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Once he lets go, he is ejected from the consulate. And this is where the picture is taken when one of the Chinese guys is kind of like holding him. Perhaps thinking, okay, we can keep him here. Look at those officers being dragged out. Look at those officers being dragged out. The officer on the left doesn't have it too bad. He's thrown on the ground. Somebody sits on him. Another person punches him. But the guy on the right is the guy who gets kicked in the head three times. It's... And this is their modus operandi. This is what they do. And they do this to try to draw attention to China more and more and more. Ill-informed. These people... Ill-informed. Exactly. These are the people who left China, left Hong Kong, after they were caught doing the same things in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, it was even worse. In Hong Kong, they set people on fire. In Hong Kong, they killed a person, an innocent person. In Hong Kong, they destroyed the subways. In Hong Kong, they burned buses. In Hong Kong, they stabbed police officers. So good luck, UK, dealing with these kind of people. So a bit upset at the police reporting only one person being attacked. Because I can show you three other people being attacked. That's what we've done in this video. Yeah, that's it's it's incredible it's, that uh, it it it's come to this, you know. Mm -hmm. And and they focus on oh, there was a person dragged inside the consulate. Well, that person walked 50, 60 meters, and entered the gate. And then they grabbed him and didn't want to let go. He, did, he chose to put himself inside the compound. Ah, it's let's it, let's be clear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it. Yeah, I mean, where 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 can we move from here? I mean, the the issue is is that once we start to see this, it could be duplicated, replicated in many other parts of the world, and that is the scary part. And something could happen, and then when it does happen. Or somebody gets 
you know, shot or, you know, uh, of course they, they got to defend it. You, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't storm embassies rule. Number one, kids don't storm embassies. I mean, common sense. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, uh, Fernando, I'm going to give you the floor here as we round up the show here, and you can tell our guests uh, what you're going to be up to in the next little while. And uh, <clears throat> when you're about to get finished there, I will cue in the music, and we will let our audiences talk together uh, amongst each other. We don't want to have a hard cut here on the program because everybody has been so great and interactive during this program. It's always a pleasure to have Fernando on this program um, as well. Uh, we will be uh, moving soon into a, a new uh, studio here at the I Chung Ching. Um, <clears throat> and don't forget, uh, for all the people watching today, please put the links out uh, to Fernando's site. They're also in the description below, but please put the links out to his channel as well. And if you're watching from Fernando's channel, we would greatly appreciate if you come over and check us out at the I Chung Ching on YouTube as well. Um, a great play by play here and for explaining that story, because I'm sure the Western media has their own uh, agenda in the collective West on what to tell. But I'm going to hand uh, the screen over to you. I will still be back okay. screen and uh, we'll cue in the music later and then we'll drop and uh, we'll say our nice goodbyes to everyone. OK, over to you, Fernando. Thanks. Two things to bear in mind when we talk about this 20th uh, National People's Congress. Number one is. The report actually acknowledges that the GDP of China is changing, is morphing. It is not what it was a decade ago, when for 20, almost 30 years, it grew at double digits. Now it's growing at one digit. But what people need to focus on is the different kind of GDP. For 30 years, it was cheap labor. Now, it's technology. Now, is breakthroughs. Now, is high tech. Now, is knowledge intensive, not um, labor intensive. So, this is a very important thing to consider. It's it's a for developing prosperity for everybody means China will focus over the next 10, 20 years on developing a much stronger domestic economy that is impervious to sanctions, that is impervious to what is happening outside. They want to build a stronger economy domestically through developing education at different levels, through developing poverty alleviation and rejuvenation of rural areas. All these things are focused on developing a stronger internal economy that might not see double-digit growth, but that is going to be more impervious to international um, waves that come and go. Um, Important to know before we go, we we need to mention what is happening to cheap manufacturing. The United States sanctioning and and so to speak forcing all kind of cooperation with China in terms of cheap manufacturing to stop. That is going to be an immediate hit. But if China has shown us is that what they do is they rise up to the challenge. I don't need to go too far. Remember the International Space Station. In 2011, <laughs> America said, no, China, you don't go to the International Space Station. Today, they have their own. And in 2024, America's International Space Station will be decommissioned. So, yes, this is something important to notice, something that China will surely overcome. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. But the last thing that I want to mention is how the world is turning. We just heard that Saudi Arabia 
Number one, did not increase oil production after being asked by Joe Biden to at least delay it until the midterms are over. And Saudi Arabia went and said, no. But more important than that, they have shown interest in joining BRICS. This is a clear cut with the West. So we're seeing a lot of things realigning. And the next five years of Xi Jinping's rule in China are going to be key. You don't change leadership in the middle of such important developments. It is all part of the blueprint that Xi Jinping has set out for China. He's not done. He's not done. As for myself, uh, my channel, are we there yet? We are going to get going tomorrow morning. And we're going to be heading out again to the south to get away from winter. I have a few projects uh, to work on. I'll be covering the Zhuhai International Air, Fair, Air, Air Show sorry, uh, at the beginning of November. And I might be going to see the birthplace of Confucius uh, as part of a tour. All COVID permitting, of course. But that's it for me. So guys, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Alex, for um, inviting me to join your show and for showing it on both channels. If you guys don't know who Alex is or who Ai Chunqing is, make sure to click in the description down below and go visit using his link. And uh, well, until we see you again, take it easy and bye for now.